So today we're gonna go over more white box top tips. And so I'm gonna go in the photography studio and just ask John to give us a few more top tips for white box use. Let's go. What do you photograph them? This is a canopid or thick headed fly. Wow, that's cool. Okay, so we're back for more white box top tips. So last time we had five top tips and now we're moving on to more. Yeah, so one thing that I always suggest when dealing with flash um, in a white box is to have multiple flashes, um, one that can give you some creative flexibility, but it also allows you to turn them down. And especially if you're using batteries, these are all AC powered, but especially if you're using batteries, that will allow you to, to shoot more and have them recycle quicker. Uh, so, you know, try to turn your flashes down to maybe you know, an eighth or a quarter power at most in most situations with multiple flashes. And then to get the right exposure, you can up your ISO um, uh, and change your aperture as needed. Uh, and then I always shoot with the highest shutter speed that I can uh, so that I'm cutting out any ambient light and thus any movement. Um, and again, using the the flashes at a low power so then ISO I typically shoot you know that that's how I really control my exposure uh, in, is using ISO and anywhere from 100 to 800 depending upon the situation okay so we our top <laughs> tips were the turn your flashes down as far as they can go some starter settings on your camera yeah and I also like to use these um, frosted, uh, semi-opaque, I guess you call them, um, little plastic containers, um, because one that's, you know, sometimes I set things aside to let them calm down. This fly is being very cooperative at the moment, but you can see through it. You can know where it's at. You can even pre-focus through it. And then if you have something that's particularly flighty where you can't lift this completely off, uh, or even if you can, you might not want to because doing this, while it blocks a little bit of light with my hand, it actually can act as a, some diffusion, uh, creating you know a nicer light on the subject itself. So I'll oftentimes um, shoot with it just, shoot angled, with it like just that. angled like that or depending on what it is, I might even be shooting into it. Um, but this is the background. All of that blows out, but the light basically is getting diffused um, through this this frosted plastic. Um, when I have something super cooperative like this, I'll just use um, this is typical diffuser that I have on my camera. I've just got it detached, and I'll just hold it over like this and get in there and just fire away because the, the in this case the insect the fly is being super cooperative. And then how do you see the, the fifth tip is your modeling lamp? Um, modeling lamp is always good. Get a good, nice modeling lamp. I have one up here at the top that's shining straight through. I can put it on the back or the front as well so that I have, can, can have the light in different places. If I'm shooting straight down, then I can't have a modeling light right there, so I can have it on the front or the back. Uh, so having a good modeling lamp so that you can see, particularly at these high magnifications, is really useful. It's definitely lighting this critter up in there. I can even see it with my video. It's great. And I mentioned, I think, last time having um, your subject raised in order to allow light to kind of bounce around a little more and, and get even some light coming up through the perspex. But another benefit of having it raised up on a platform like this is that you can get down low really easily. Uh, so with it raised up, I can get down right on its level um, and take shots, you know, straight lateral shots that might be more difficult if it was sitting directly 
on the lazy susan because you can there's just not as much you know opportunity to, to move your camera yeah uh, so it's a, a added benefit um in my mind having something like that okay so an overview put, turn your flashes way down so they can recharge quickly some go-to settings on your camera using a container that's see-through um, get low and a modeling lamp so this thick-headed fly, Physocephala floridana, we actually found on our back porch um, by a carpenter bee nest. And uh, so the one cool thing about this critter is that it does uh, um, parasitize bees, which of course cannot, can be a bad thing too, but if it's going after our carpenter bees that are destroying our pergola, I see that as a little bit of a plus. <laughs> so when we first caught this, you can see that it was um, totally orange. So it had must have just emerged. And uh, we had a hard time identifying it initially. And we actually kept it uh, a day. And then the next day, its uh, abdomen turned um, almost all black. And uh, its mouth parts, uh, it started holding its mouth parts uh, out in front of it uh, sometimes, which is a characteristic of this group. So um, so it was really cool to see the progression of them being almost completely orange to then its more permanent color, which then allowed us to more easily identify it. So cool little critter. Mm -hmm.